creep night. Sure to send a chill down your spine. Welcome to creep night. Do you believe in reincarnation? Well, I do. <laughs> Some of you might find this crazy. Some of you will say it didn't happen. Well, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't really matter what you think. Because you weren't there when it happened. When I was a kid, about six, maybe seven, something happened. Something weird that I'm just now thinking about to my old age. It started off as a dream, like any kid would have. You know, maybe they're flying. Oh, they became a superhero and saved the day in the nick of time. You know what I mean? Those kind of dreams. But something slowly leaked inside my dream. Something interesting. Something that just didn't fit. I stood there in my dream looking at this thing. I got closer, and when I did, I realized something. This thing wasn't a thing, it, it was a person, and I knew this person. But for some reason, I could not put my finger on it. Not at all. And when I woke up from the dream, I had this eerie sensation that I just could not shake. My mother would tell me, oh, it's just a dream. Go back to sleep. Don't worry about it. If you get that feeling again, just shrug it off. Well, I kept having the dream. And this time, I remembered what my aunt had said a long time ago. The next time you see this person in your dream, stop for a second and see if it will answer a question. And once it does, then you'll know for a fact that you can communicate better with it. And maybe, just maybe, you'll figure out what it wants. So the next time I had the dream, I did what my aunt said. I stopped and stared at this person. I had never gotten, you know, details of a face or how tall it actually was. All I could see was a silhouette of a person and their eyes were bright red and all that, you know, just weird. Kind of looked a little demonic, if you ask me. Um, so I walked up to it and of course, at you know, age six or seven, I'm petrified, you know, because I'm only human and I'm a little kid and this shit scares me. So I walk up to it and in my little squeaky voice, I say, what, what do you want? The thing doesn't answer me. It just it turns around and it points at me with its long shadow-like finger. It almost looks like it has like a claw at the end or a pointed finger. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm staring at this thing and it points at me. So I don't understand what that means at the time. So of course I wake up screaming and crying and my mom comes running in and she's telling me hey it's okay it's just a bad dream but well, let's go get some you know cool water to cool you down you'll be all right and after a while she'd hold my hand take me back up to my room let me get back in bed and you know she'd make sure i fell asleep again and then you know the next day would come and I'd forget about the dream a little bit, and then I'd go to school, and then I'd come home, eat dinner, play around a little bit, and then I'd go to bed. Well, I had the dream again, and, you know, it just kept happening and happening, and, you know, my mom's like, it's just a dream, let it go, blah, blah, blah. Well, finally, I was getting, I was getting sick of this dream, because I kept waking up screaming, and I was sweaty and shaky, and didn't want to go to sleep at night. So, you know, as a kid, when you're having those nightmares, or these dreams refuse to go away, you get to the point where you just don't want to sleep no more. So I tried, tried to stay up as late as I could. I'd throw fits. If my mom was like, hey, you gotta go to bed. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to bed. Nice try. Um, it just got to the point where my mom would have to stay in the room with me until I'd actually fall asleep. It was crazy. 
And then after a while, I started having different dreams. Well, I thought this dream had finally passed. And then the next thing I know, I'm having the dream again, like a month later, the dream comes back. So I'm dreaming that I'm playing on a playground set, you know, a jungle gym. And I'm having fun. It's a nice, warm, not too hot, not too cold, a little bit of breeze, you know, a few little clouds in the sky. I'm playing on a jungle gym. And the next thing I know, here comes this figure again. And it's never like a walking, like take a few steps walking. It's like it's floating. It's like hovering over to me. And it stops dead smack in the middle of where I am. So here I am, once again, looking at this shadow uh, silhouette of a person that I still cannot see any details. I don't know what's going on here. And it's pointing at me again. And I, I'm like, I'm like, what are you pointing at? Why are you pointing at me? What do you want? Because you know, when you're a little kid, you get frustrated. And I'm like screaming at the top of my lungs, what do you want? Leave me alone. So my mom comes back in because she can hear me screaming at the top of my lungs. And I wake up just shaking again, going, you know, I had that dream again. And she goes, it, it's just a dream. You're watching too many little silly movies that are probably scaring you. Or it's the coat in your closet hanging out of place. And that's what's scaring you. Or you have an active, overly active imagination and you need to stop doing that. Which, you know, when you're a kid and you just, you don't, uh, you don't turn that stuff off. I mean, sorry, that's not how that works. And sometimes when you're an adult, you don't. I, I know I still have it. Um, but yeah, I had that dream again. You know, goes this goes on for months and months and months. And then one day I stop having the dream. So I think I'm out of the clear. And it's been like maybe a year or two. So now I'm maybe eight, maybe nine. And, you know, I haven't had the dream in a couple years. And on one night, I'm playing a video game. And the next thing I know, I see something out of the corner of my eye move across the wall. I turn to look. I don't see it at first. I just see the silhouette in the corner of my peripheral vision. So I'm like, okay. It, nothing's there. So I go back to playing video games. And I keep getting this weird, weird sensation that something isn't necessarily right. Like, I've been here before, but I haven't. You know what I mean? It's one of those weird sensations that if you ever have it, you'll know. And I feel like something's watching me. So I turn around and I look. Well, in the mirror behind me was this shadow. And now I'm realizing I'm not awake. I'm actually dreaming that I'm playing video games and I see the shadow. It comes up to me again and it points. And you know, now I'm eight, nine years old and I'm like getting more like, what, what is going on here? So I look at it and I'm still scared because I don't know what this thing is. And at the top of my lungs, I go, what do you want? Like, what? Why are you here? Who are you? It doesn't answer me. It does not answer me yet. So now I'm still stuck seeing this thing, trying to figure out what it wants, trying to, you know, not have this dream anymore. So a week goes by after the incident. I don't see it. I don't have the same dream anymore for a while. We should say for a while. You know, I'm getting on the bus to school and this time I am awake and I know this for a fact, you know, cause I can remember, you know, it was cloudy, a little bit of rain, a little bit of fog and we're, we're going to my school and I'm telling my friends about this dream. Well, they all think I'm just trying to scare them. So they laugh it off. I'm not laughing because I'm like, okay, I've had this dream since I was like six to seven. Now it's following me to eight to nine. And I'm like, I seriously don't know what is going on. Well, this particular morning, um, while on the bus, because we haven't reached school yet, um, the fog 
was so heavy, it became so heavy after the rain stopped that our bus driver did not use her, um, what are they called, headlights. She wasn't using her headlights or her brake lights. So the semi crashes into the back of the bus and well, it tips over, you know, I'm knocked unconscious and I have this dream in an unconscious state of mind. Here is this figure. It points at me and it touches my forehead this time. So now I am ripped out of my body and I'm stuck in this realm that I have no idea where the hell I am. So I don't know if maybe you've come across, you know, me. And if you have, you might notice some subtle differences because now I'm not me anymore. Thank you for listening to Creep Night.